Hello guys, welcome to Clickbait. Yes, it is my voice and not Joe's, but he's here. He is here. Uh, he just has a little sinus infection, so he's preserving his his voice for the real tea, you know. Um, exactly, I want to save it. I want to save it. <laughs> exactly. All right, so uh, we have the Bachelor Nation breakdown as usual, and our girls... Rachel and Gabby, they are hitting the scene already. Their bachelorette duties have started at the CMA Fest. We're going to talk about that. Also, uh, Nick Fayel and Natalie, mm, what cuties. They uh, did the Call Her Daddy podcast. We're going to get into that. And Andy Dorfman has some words for the two bachelorettes. She doesn't love it. And we're going to talk about that as well. Blake Moynes joins us, and I'm excited to hear about his trip that he had with Zach and Noah because it looked really freaking cool and wildlife. Let's go. And the clickbait. We're just going to save that for that because it's a lot to talk about with the clickbait. And um, I, it was therapy. I need it, Joe. I need it, Tia. <laughs> you said wildlife. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Wildlife. Let's go. That's me. I live a wildlife, baby. Woo! No. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, actually, Blake invited me on this wildlife trip oh um, he did and yeah we we hung, we yeah I was just he, like, he said he's not that wow he not that wow no more y'all i was just like blake like um and i like blake we hung out in toronto and i was like yeah you know i'd love to but you you got the wrong idea i'm not that i'm not a wildlife guy you I'm know not an uh, I'm guy. The um, yeah, i like the city like i don't think that's okay. a trip he said, yeah. I just moved to the concrete jungle. <laughs> I, was like, I, got, I was sick in paradise. When I got to paradise, I went to paradise twice. I was sick both times because I couldn't <laughs> handle the, the weather and the, the situation. So. Wait, you were sick. I was. I, I get sick every time. Poisoning. I did. I got sick from the water. I'm like, that's why when he asked me to go do this wildlife, I'm like, it's like on a boat. I'm like, I'll throw up the whole time. I'm going to lose 40 pounds if I go. Not for me. I'm an air conditioning, indoorsy kind of five-star hotel guy. Oh, gosh, yeah. guys. Somebody, okay, Joe, the sinus infection is flaring up. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Especially right now. I have a sinus hell. infection. I couldn't even do the intro of this podcast. <laughs> Somebody bring me a wet towel. Um, yeah, oh, you need your Serena. When, when are you guys going to be reunited? Uh, Saturday. Okay, so as of right now, Serena, Serena, yeah. Serena, he don't know what to do without you. Look at that. I haven't, I haven't seen <laughs> Are you going her home or is she coming weeks. to Chicago? Uh, we live in New York, so. I live oh, wait. In New York. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in Chicago, though. I know. I'll go to New York Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just answered that easily, but easierly. Is easierly a word? I don't think it is. Okay. Absolutely I wonder, not. I wonder what you, you would have done if, if, what Serena would have done if you did go. She'd be like, Joe, really? You're going? On a wildlife trip? Yeah, no. No. <laughs> she laughed when I told her. <laughs> oh. oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. All right, Tia. Tell us. Tell us uh, what we got. Let's, let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, first <laughs> things first, the Bachelor Nation breakdown. Bachelor Nation went all out at CMA Fest to support both Bachelorettes, Gabby and Rachel. It was technically their first like promo of themselves and their new Bachelorette season mm -hmm. coming up. I did not get to see them in Nashville. Uh, I know they were there just for a brief trip, but I'm sure the turnout was fantastic. I know that Becca and Thomas got to go. Serena got to go. Joe I was missed sick. it. <laughs> yeah. um, all was in support to go. of Gabby and Rachel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm they, so they, excited. They DM'd me and was like, why didn't Tia come say what's up to us? They, -uh. they wanted to know. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, damn. Oh, no. I'm I was kidding. down there some, but I never got into the thick of Broadway. The big crowd, man, kind of. I was excited. To, I was excited to go. I, I loved Nashville. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I was too sick uh, to go. But yeah. Yeah. it seems like it seems like people were really excited and and happy that they showed up. Did Did Serena tell you how how it went, Joe? What did Serena say? She said it was great. So there was. Um, so I know it was Becca and Thomas the first day. They, you know, we saw photos of them mm -hmm. reenacting their engagement, which is always fun. <laughs> um, did, she, did, of... did Becca really get on one knee when she did it the first time? Do we know? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, I, I don't, don't think so. I, I think, think it was more either. of a, they seem to be that. like a, a picnic couple. Like they're always, they're always out like pick, 
to, like having like they little have picnics. a family they have so, a bunch of dogs i don't know i can kind of see her doing it so they were there and then serena and i were supposed to be the next day and i wasn't able to go and then we saw gabby and rachel which people are dying to see them together because they're both the leads of the next show curious to see what happens there the whole setup was cute too the whole little bachelorette setup and they got to go to cma fest too which is fun i'm sure they got absolutely bombarded yeah. Nashville. Yes. Yeah. It is Nashville wild. is really like they there are some diehard fans, Bachelor oh, yeah. Nation and fans in Nashville. And it's never people from Nashville, it's always people from out of town. Because typically mm. people that live in Nashville don't go up to people because there's so many like country singers and stuff here. You can oh. tell the people from out of town that come specifically like to meet people and So you like yeah. reality stars on nobody care. They trying to they trying to see the, the country. They're trying stars. to see Reba. Yeah. yeah. I'm well, trying to see Reba. Luke Bryan walking in the streets. I know, me too. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll tell you, I think Gabby and Rachel, from seeing them at the CMA Fest via Instagram, they look happy. They do. And, yeah. And they're still friends, which is and, always good. And they're, they're still friends. They're actually still yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah. And that was a big that was a big thing that they were going to be, um, you know, put People against each other. That. Yeah. And so they look happy. Speaking of that, this is kind of out of order, but this does kind of relate. So another one of our breakdowns this week is Andy Dorfman thinks that having two bachelorettes is sexist. So we mm. just kind of talked about that they're still friends. Um, but Andy made a comment in an interview that she feels like having two female leads is sexist and was saying that she would like to see two men kind of go head to head and go mm -hmm. at it. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't really think it's sexist because Gabby and Rachel aren't really going at it. Like they're not yeah. competing against each other. They're both trying to find so, love. So how, how do y'all feel about the comment that it's sexist? I, I mean, I personally don't think it's sexist. I think, I don't know who makes the decision, who makes the decision of like, who's the next bachelorette, who's the next lead. I think if whoever makes that decision was sitting there saying like, huh, we can't just have one woman, we gotta have two because they can't carry a show like a man could. Then that's sexist. I don't think that was the conversation. <laughs> I think the conversation was, we had a crazy ending to Clayton season. Both these women got their hearts broken. We believe both of them. It's too hard to choose one. We've never had two. We think it's gonna be entertaining. Let's do it. Cause that's they both what I, deserve that, that's, it. Yeah. And that's yeah, what I think happened. They deserve it, and they, and also everyone has been crying for the show to switch some things up, right? Yeah. Right. The show's yeah. been on for a while. Switch some stuff up. I I understand what you're saying. Yes, and there has been Bachelor and Bachelorette. Um, I think where it comes from is, and again, I'm not Andy, but there are situations where people say we're going to have two women, just kind of like the Tasha in um, in Caitlyn thing, right? We have two women hosts to take the place of this one guy host. And I think maybe that's where it stems from. And listen, they've done this on many award shows. You know, well, let's get Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, you know, to host the Emmys or whatever. So I oh. think maybe that's where it came from, if yeah. you know, if that makes sense. But I do think that the show is just trying new stuff. And the way that they're the way that their season ended. Yeah, it's I mean, I would have been heartbroken for Gabby or Rachel if they pick the other, right? So uh, I am excited, more excited to watch this season of Bachelor. If someone was like, okay, you can watch another Bachelor season or you can watch two Bachelorettes, sign me up for the two Bachelorettes. Yeah. Like, well, I want to watch yeah. that. Double yeah. the entertainment, double the love. Double the love. Yeah, that's that's sure. where I'm behind it because if both of these women find love, wow. Great, right. but also if only one and the other doesn't, drama. I'm like, whoa! At least they both got a chance. <laughs> exactly, I mean. exactly. So, um, so yeah, I I understand why she probably said that. Also, I'm just gonna say, I have heard from you know I have some friends that are bachelorettes, and I have heard and they've been very vulnerable and they've said things like you know you are on top of the world when you are in this position everyone's coming at you every you know and i under and, and andy was actually a bachelorette why would you want to share that so 
I think maybe that could also be something there that you have to share that limelight. You have to share that. And also, you know, with Instagram followers and all this stuff, what if Gabby's more popular than Rachel? And what if this and that once a show airs or whatever the case that can also, you know, um, add some friction, I think. So yeah, I, but you I, can't worry like, but you can't you, worry about that for sure. You gotta worry about yourself. You can't for worry sure, about if, you, if, if you're Rachel, if Gabby has more followers than you, like you have to just like that's. But I think that but I'm saying if there's only one, then there's no competition is what I think yeah. the point of yeah. the whole the reasoning of Andy. So I understand why she's saying what she said. But also, I think just from an entertainment standpoint, it's going to be the show needed to shake it up. This is how they shake yeah. it up. And I I hope that if it goes well and it maybe they'll have they will have two bachelor guys as well. Yeah. Yeah, we never know. Yeah. yeah. At the same time as that, how cool to get to like have someone to go through that experience with you. Like, yeah, yeah you are alone in that spotlight, you know, by yourself, navigating it by yourself. But how cool to have someone else to kind of like be able to actually share that. Because when you get off the show, nobody understands what you went through unless they have done the show. Yes. So these and... two actually get to go through this whole process together if they let them communicate behind the scenes you know what I mean yeah and one of the hardest things I think about going on a reality show is you are you don't have your best friends you don't right. have your family you don't have people to go and get their opinion so you can actually talk to your friend about oh girl let me tell you what he did right <laughs> he did this he said this what you think yeah. as long <laughs> like, as it that's doesn't cross dope. lines with like oh I liked yeah Joey, I don't Joey, know Joey Justin too Mm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And that's what um, Gabby said. Like, it's great that I get to do this with my best friend. Yeah. So We yeah. speculate a lot, but we're freaking pumped to see it just as much as everybody else. Yes, All right, yes, yes. let's wrap it up. Our third one for today, Nick Viola and Natalie, his girlfriend, appeared on Call Her Daddy to talk about their relationship. Some highlights from this interview. Um, Nick was hesitant to start the relationship because of their significant age difference. There's 18 years between them. And um, they're not not trying to have kids. Those are some standouts mm -hmm. from this. So interview. how old is Nick and how old is Natalie? Wow. Nick's got to be in his 40s at this point. 40, Natalie early, early is, 40s? Natalie, we, we're friends with them. We've been to dinner yeah. with them. Natalie's Natalie and, right? Natalie and Serena, I think, are the same age. Or she might be a year younger. So she's either 20, she's 23, 23 or 24. And yeah. Nick, I, she's 23. Uh, he's 41. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. The age, yeah. the age. I mean, like He seems my, young. I mean, I don't Nick I don't looks know. good too. I mean, he looks yeah. good for I mean, he looks good for his age. Um I think he's going to look like that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I I mean, we have a Serena and I have an age gap. It's an 11-year age gap. Um It never really it never really phased us. Um mm -hmm. it never really phased me. I'm also I'm also quite immature, so I think that <laughs> helps. I feel like it phases Shut other up. people more than no, it phases the not. people in you're the relationship. No, you're not. You're not immature. Like I just that, think once you get to a certain point, you're an adult. And yeah. you're yeah. an adult, dating another adult. And Serena's very mature. You know, like, yeah. I, I, it's not like you talk to her and you're like, well, this girl is, like, talking about, you know, whatever, ring pops. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But, like, she's very mature. I, I just watched just... the video on ring pops. So. <laughs> of course he <laughs> Synergy, synergy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and so I think same thing with Nick and Natalie, like, uh, I mean, and people know, I guess who follow me, I have dated men that are a lot older than me. So I think age is nothing but a number for sure. But, um, they've been living together for a while though. I was surprised about the engagement talk. Oh, really? Yeah, I was surprised. I was like, I w like it sounded like it's something like she said, she mentioned something about it being a, a you know, those tough conversations. I'm like, y'all got a baby dog together. Y'all live together. Well, it's just a matter yeah. of time. Like you were, I, I would, you were I, surprised that they were saying that it was like a conversation that had to be had. Yeah. Yeah, I was too. Like I, I I've but yeah, like I said, I've been out to dinner with them a few times and I would be shocked if they broke up because they yeah. just seem to be really in love. They have uh, great yeah. chemistry. So. I think she's it. Yeah, I, I do she's too. she's it for him. I do too. Yeah, too. so I was like, it's just a matter of time. I mean, I don't know when exactly, you know, of course, uh, when he's going to decide to do it, but 
Honey, they are, they're great. They're really, really great. I, I really like both of them. And I really, really like her. Like, almost like a little more than Nick sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long road for this man, but by God, he has made it here. <laughs> Success. No shade, Nick. Natalie's great. You want a great girl. You do. <laughs> but it also, um, to actually talk about the topic for a quick second uh, before we move on, it is cool that they did do Call, Call Her Daddy because that is one of the largest podcasts um, in this whole realm of podcasts, and there's thousands of them. All right, guys. Bachelor's Breakdown concluded, and um, those are our thoughts. <laughs> you don't have to agree with us if you think. <laughs> and now for the clickbait of the week. <sighs> this article was hard to get through, not going to lie, um, because I was triggered. Yep, I was. All right. Uh, it is talking. The title of the article is, Does No Contact Work? after a breakup yes for 11 reasons okay so before i ask these questions to the two of you i'm going to tell you the 11 reasons read them off got it number one it gives you time to clear your head it gives you time to focus on yourself they'll see that you're no longer available and want to talk to you uh it gives your ex a chance to miss you It gives you time for healing. It gives you a chance to evaluate what you actually want in a relationship. It protects you from being consciously, or (laughs) not consciously, continuously triggered, like this article did for me. It protects you from that. (laughs) It opens up um, for you to meet someone new. It puts a stop to off and on again cycles with this person. It gives you a dignified breakup. Unlike Jasmine Sullivan, bust the windows out your car, just cut it off. (laughs) And the last one, it proves that there is life after your ex. So, my friends, um, do you guys think that this is an effective way to get over an ex? Just block them, cut off all communication, don't talk to them anymore. How realistic is that and do you think it's effective? Uh, I think it's personal. For me, I think it is effective okay. uh, for for me i i you know i think if you want to move on or at least if i want to move on um i need to cut that part of my life out so i can move forward um i don't see any benefit in staying in contact with your ex that's what i think yes okay to you yeah i agree 100 percent. um i haven't always done it yeah. I've like rubbed salt in that wound many times and then wonder why I was miserable. Um, but I do believe it works. And while I was reading this, I thought about the fact that after being on The Bachelor or Paradise, whatever, especially The Bachelor, I went home. Um, I was the final four. So then by the time I went home, there was no way for me to have contact with Ari again. So right. it's like, yes, we were on a dating show, but it was still technically it felt like a breakup to me. I had no contact with this man. There was no way to get a hold of him. He was still doing the show. So it did help me to move on from that faster because there was no way for me to check in on this man or talk to him or any of that. Um, so it does work. It's just a lot easier said than done when you have access to social media and their phone number and their location and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, it works. You just have to actually do it. Yeah. I also, I, one of the reasons I don't think you should do it so you could, so your ex can miss you more. No, like, I did I not think, like that. Yeah, like, like I think that's, I think that's childish. Or, or to try to get them back. Yeah, or I think you're just, you're not facing reality, and you still want to be with your ex if that's what you're doing. So, okay. I think, I think, and but I do think that happens. <laughs> I was uh, really surprised they put that in that article. Uh, They're like, I, if you want to play hard to get, if you want to make your ex miss yeah. you, you could also do the no contact rule and I'm like oh honey oh yeah. no that is she said good. she said I <laughs> that is I <laughs> I mean yeah that part does work but then if they don't actually miss you and don't reach out then you're like damn I just feel dumb well but yeah and they also say in the article they will reach out to you mo- oh it, oh I wrote this down hold on it's a uh hold on they said it is a like a 60% chance, no, a 90% chance 
that eventually the dumper will reach out to the dumped if they haven't heard from them. 90%. Wow. So, like, check on them to be like, are you okay after I dumped your ass? L- yeah, well, to play games, to continue to play yeah. games. Like, oh, you're not thinking about me? You know, like, what? I always say men have this sixth sense with, like, the moment you're, like, entertaining something else. One they're like, oh, what's thousand up? percent. It is a radar. Yeah. They always know. Yeah. They always know. You download Hinge, here comes the X. <laughs> Oh, I saw your Instagram story. Uh, yeah, that's what they do. The if they know, it's so crazy. They're like, "Oh, she out living her life, doing mm-hmm. good, doing great." I said, "I saw this thing, and it was like, I, I don't even know if I told you guys this or not, or where, where it came from." But oh, a guy goes, "I love your energy," and then they drain you of it. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> they like, girl, you're doing too good. I'm about to come fuck some shit up. <laughs> yeah, so right. I, I really. I really uh, that statistic of the um, of the the ninety percent was crazy. Also, let's talk about the article ta- says thirty days. You need to wait. You need, if you're gonna re- if you really want to get over someone, you need to wait at least thirty days of no content t- contact. And I'm like, uh, what for me? I mean, I think that part. And I'll say to our listeners that part is subjective for sure. It has taken me a year. I've blocked an ex for a year. And after that year, I was like, oh, like, and, I'm, but I you feel still great. Work, it acted like you wait 30 days and then you can reach out again. Or maybe or just, it said 60 days. I'm like. No, it said a minimum don't. of uh, 30 days to have a real impact. And then it says, but most people, it's a minimum of 60 days. And that's a better idea. And you can wait. So you can wait till you're really, truly healed. That in that sense, I think. You know, there's certain situations where you have a mutual friends or a mutual friend group or something like that, and you just have to see each other or you might yeah. see each other. And you want to avoid those situations, I think, is what the article is okay. saying for 30 days, sense. 60 days, you know, because you you really want to just cut it off. There's also this um, there's also this podcast that I listen to, and they talk about the different levels of dopamine that we get from you know, from love and when you love someone. And sometimes the reason why people continue to reach out is like the moment they can hear from you or or say anything to you or get any type of attention, it feeds that little dopamine part of them. And they have they no intention. They feel better. And they yeah. feel better. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, oh. So. Um, love is have, a drug. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love, it's just temporary love, love too. Drug. It's, ugh. You got to get over it. You got to get through it. So that's where I my now approach is I have to completely block my my last ex did some crazy shit and I have blocked him on everything. He is blocked on every single thing ever because I was like, I'm never talking to this person again. And I actually just saw him for the first time in a year and it was awful. But how how are your dopamine levels? Oh, it was it was awful. Piss poor. Was, really? Did, it was, so, it was did you guys girl. did you guys talk or? No, I looked at him like, if you say something to me, I'm gonna throw my drink on you. <laughs> like I've I seen would... that look too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I I I gave him the look, and he was like, whoop. He kept like pacing around, and I and I gave him that look, and he was like, whoop. Like he like he like left. <laughs> Out. So yeah, and then I had a breakdown. It was great. It was fantastic. Woo! But um, definitely not missing him. Definitely still blocked. Definitely still gone. And I think this article definitely works if you are really not trying to play a game and you're really trying to get over someone, dropping yeah. all contact. And and I think if you're not over someone, oh, you gotta you gotta go through it. Uh, Erica Baidu tweeted once, girl bust the windows, call them a thousand times, do everything you got to do so you can get over it. Burn his clothes in the it's front hard. Burn his clothes. So do hard. it all. Yeah. Do it all. Because, like, restricting that energy is hurting you more. So just do it, girl. you get over it eventually. Yeah. So um, I'm not trying to promote violence, but... <laughs> I mean, it sure sounds like you are. But I am. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the 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 and everything. Don't let them access you. I may have made this up, but I'm pretty sure I saw one time this girl blocked her ex on everything, like all social media, and he reached mm-hmm. out on her damn LinkedIn. Like commented See? on commented on her LinkedIn. See, and that is what I call emotion abuse. Hi, right. I don't understand or respect your boundaries. 
Yeah. Correct. That's awful. Yeah. That's awful. Don't do that. Yeah, Don't you got to move on. About you. you get out of here. Yeah. If you want, if you if you truly want to move on, you need to move on. And if that takes blocking the person out of your life, that's what you got to do. Right. That's what yes. I think. All right. Um, our next guest, our only guest coming on today, um, <laughs> is no stranger of falling in love. Um, he has been on oh. The Bachelorette a few times. Very excited to interview this guy. I consider him a friend. Um, he's a Canadian, like my fiance. Everyone, please welcome Blake Moines to the podcast. Blake, what's up? Welcome to Clickbait. Good seeing you again. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Everything's everything's good. What about you guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I had a little sinus infection. Um, he still has it. Mo- he's barely functioning. Right? <laughs> but so for the most part, it's pretty good. Pretty he good. said he had to show up for you today, you know, because he didn't show oh, up for you the right. other day. So. I was excited when I when <laughs> yeah. I heard it was when I heard it was Blake. I was excited. Um, I've done shots of tequila with Blake. We oh. actually got pretty banged up in Toronto one day. So, oh, um, interesting! Tell us yeah, about we that. Can we hear about that? What 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 was going on? I don't know about that. Uh, well, I met up with Serena and him midday, and we got into day drinking, and then the day oh. drinking turned into night drinking, and then just you know it just flowed. Yeah. I love a day drink. We had, we had a lot to talk about. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was good stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. I wish I was so. a fly on that wall or in, <laughs> out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there uh-huh. in Toronto, yeah. <laughs> love day. Day drinking is the best. I, I prefer day drinking over night drinking. No question. That's what adults do. That's how you right? know you're over 30 is when you <laughs> yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, almost. probably. Exactly. All right. So, Blake, <laughs> let's talk about um, saving the blue this yeah. past trip. Um, you, Noah, Zach Clark, uh, let's mm. break it down. How did it come about? How did it come about? Um, so I guess obviously you guys probably see, I advocate a ton on my socials about just wildlife conservation in general. So I made a lot of connections that way. Uh, actually, you know what, actually, let me, let me, let me stop you right there. Let, sure. how about, yeah, give us more of a background of like what you do and, and why, um, why wildlife? Yeah, uh, I guess the short story would be I've always been obsessed, like as a kid, as a kid, always obsessed with wildlife, I'd be the weirdo, you know, collecting bugs under rocks and making little ecosystems in jars and just collecting frogs, those things. And it kind of just as I got older, uh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, as I got older, the passion just never left. And I went to school and took like outdoor adventure, expedition, survival type stuff, not wildlife related because I didn't have the marks to get into the zoology and things I wanted yet because I was a jock hockey player and didn't focus on things I needed to focus on. So then um, I went and worked with birds of prey and things like that and found other avenues to jump back into what I've always was passionate about. And then after I landed off the show and the platform came, I realized how much good I could do with just the advocating stuff that was I was doing. I was seeing great turnaround and a lot of change happening with petitions that I put out and seeing, you know, 10,000 petitions being signed. I'm okay, like there's something here, like something yeah. with this. Mm-hmm. And um, it just kind of flowed. And the more that I advocated, the more connections I made. And I realized that how much value I could bring to animals that didn't have a voice. And it just kind of spiraled into this crazy thing that is traveling around working with non for profit organizations that are trying to do good for certain species mostly endangered and um yeah this summer's kind of lined up into a whole bunch of different visits with uh, different organizations and that's kind of how it spiraled out of control okay so this last trip that you went on with noah and zach how did that come about and did you plan that or did someone come to you or (coughs) so this organization, I, I, I actually have a, a, a partnership with an organization or a, a company that does wildlife bracelets that contribute 10% to certain organizations based on the one that you buy, whether it's a penguin or a polar bear. In this case, it was sharks. And so um, we made a, a connection through that uh, company that I work with. Um, and then it's just people knowing people. And then it was like, okay, well, how can we do something where we all win? And that was making a great experience, bringing down some other big personalities that have a great influence and in turn a great once a lifetime opportunity to do the things that we did. And um, then we shot content. We're making a little docu-series on the importance of uh, saving marine species and three shark, two shark species specifically that are critically endangered and another ray. Um, But yeah, just that's kind of how it came to be. And it's a great trade-off from organizations. I just try to help them with my platform and in change, I get great experiences uh, doing things I've always wanted to do. So it's, it's been really uh, so fun. where this, um, this past, 
I don't want to call. It. Oh, yeah, it's a trip, I guess. Yeah. yeah this past trip. Um, yeah. Where Where was the location? Where were you guys? So we're down in the Bahamas, um, okay. but not not the typical Bahamas that you think, which is there's two islands. So we went to Andros, which is a a lot less popular island. It's um, more remote, um, and so we went down there and. We were in two different parts of the island. One was very remote. We're doing more of an exploration adventure type trip, trying to find a species called the uh, sawfish. Um, sawfish. Yes, it's a. It's a. I don't know if you how to explain. This. I'm googling it. Has like, it. I'm it, has googling like, it has like a very long snout. It kind of looks like a chainsaw, and and they are critically endangered. And so we're trying to find them um, in a certain remote area. Oh. They haven't. Yeah, kind of kind of freaky looking, right? Yeah. And are you guys are now are you guys staying in a hotel like are you sleeping outside like what's the so, so joe this is where like you would have probably not loved it right so like <laughs> yeah. we, you know and it, the first part was in a, a motel style that got all flooded out not the greatest accommodations but this is where it's fun and getting uncomfortable right and seeing kind of zach and noah in that environment was kind of fun too and you kind of <laughs> bond off that um, were they the next, freaking out? Were they freaking um, out? You know, you know what? This is the thing. Was I was very specific with who I was like potentially thought. Yeah, that's what Whoa. it looks like there. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I personally think like Zach and Noah were like perfect people to ask. Yes. <laughs> Not yeah, himself. Oh, um, <laughs> 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 well, yeah. I mean, better than me. Well, listen, sure. Joe. I mean, there's other trips coming up where we're staying at the Four Seasons and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you might, you might Joe, be better. Like, right. for a Shine me up. Event. Shine me yeah. up. Well, you yeah. know what it is. Water. I wouldn't. Water wouldn't have been the best for me. I would have rather. <laughs> like, I'll do. I would consider like Africa a safari okay. kind of a thing. Okay. I'd consider okay. it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Listen, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not, and that's why I have to be kind of careful who I choose to come on these things with me, just because the last thing I want, Joe, is you coming out there on day two saying like I can't do this, and yeah. then we're in yeah. some trouble. So, uh, so yeah. Blake, I'm looking at one of your posts too, and it looks like you got to hang out with some kids too, and like maybe teach them about some of the yeah sharks. That's so so cute. Yeah, it was it was really cool. We we went into a school and just basically spoke on awareness and education of the sawfish and just talking about why it's important to try and protect them in that area because they are remote to that area. So mm -hmm. um, we brought in toothbrushes that were wooden and talking about plastics and getting rid of your, your plastic toothbrush and how it takes thousands of years to break down and how that affects us and how that affects wildlife and just kind yeah. of doing little little talks like that to listen they're they're the ones that are going to take the reins on things as as we move out things are not looking good right now and so the more education we could bring to kids about For this sure. stuff is going to go a long way so so did you find the sawfish we did not so <gasps> we did not i know i know and so that's the, that's that's what sucks right and so you think about it you spend money and you fund help fund these trips, these exploration trips to try and find them. They're critically endangered. They are hard to find. Yeah. So we went out and tried to explore this new area that they haven't done before. And that's what's important that was funding these things. And it's tedious and it's not always fun and it's hard work and you're not going to get the results you want all the time, but you just got to keep pushing forward to basically what we're doing is trying to find where they are and how they're using Andros and potentially where their nurseries are so that we can protect those areas and change legislation in the Bahamas to better protect them so they're not being fished and all these things. So lots goes into these trips. It's not always fun, but the exploration part really is. So, okay, so educate us. So if you had found them, mm -hmm. you would have basically followed it to its <laughs> home or where its yeah. family is, and then how do you save them? Or how do you- Yeah, like where do you yeah, put them? Yeah, then what? Yeah, then what? So it's it's not quite as simple as that, but the whole <laughs> idea is like, it's, the whole idea is to- Get out, like, throw the truck, let's the fuck out of here. So, 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 say, so say, say one is, is seen, right? That's like, okay, wow. We can now document GPS this coordinate is okay. One is seen here, so now they can start to focus the research moving forward in this this part of the island. What happening is is expansion on coastlines because of human activity is wiping out mangroves, an important um, environment ecosystem for these certain species to flourish in. And so, if mm. we can if we can prove that they're using these certain areas to then stop human expansion and wiping out these nurseries that would otherwise help rebound these populations, 
it goes a long way. So first we just need to start GPSing and proving that this is where they are. And so when they're critically endangered, then we can put publications forward to help change legislation for the Bohemian government to then hopefully protect these areas more and put more rules on fishing and expansion and all those things. So um, there's so many yes. steps. Yeah. There's, there's and like so by much the time that goes you get to that point, the animal could be extinct. Oh, that's yes. That's so sad. So yeah. how, you, many, how many do you think there are, like roughly, of these sawfish? Uh, that's a question that I'd be lying if I said I knew. I would mm. I'd tell you critically endangered, the next step is extinct. So okay. So so it's not, not a lot. It's not good, right? And so it changes. They, they're, there's a region that they're in from the Bahamas to, to Florida, the small two sawfish, the one I'm talking about. Um, but again, there's lots of fishing going on in the Florida area. And so they're getting caught up in, in bycatch, not on purpose necessarily, but getting caught up in fishing for other things. Um, so mm. it's it's not looking that good, but you just got to keep helping fund these organizations that are trying to do their best to to make some change. It's a sawfish, right? I think this is what people think of us like. Well, it's just a fish. It's just a. It's just this. Like, what, you know, if we take this out of the ecosystem, what does it do? It's like every animal plays a role. Yes, some more important have more ecological importance than others, but they all play a minor role in some way. Like a big Jenga piece in a in a way. You take out an important piece, everything falls apart. Uh, I see. Do you ever do you ever get discouraged that you ever like, you know what, I'm just kind of like burnt out? Uh, when you it, especially when you get like no results, kind of. Yeah. I you know, I think for most people, I think you can, and you know, a lot of it's negativity, right? All the social stuff you see, I mean, from the news and just general, it's mostly negativity, but there's a reason for that. Things aren't good. We're not doing things the right way. And mm. so, yes, it can be, but I also see the small wins in things. And so if I have the opportunity, I do have the opportunity to, to change a lot just because of the voice that I have now, if I were to stop, it would just be such a disservice. So I just keep plugging forward. I have a, a strong like mind in terms of like, you know, when I was in Kenya and seeing the things that are happening out there with poaching of elephants and rhino, all that stuff. I have to, I have an obligation. I feel like to just keep doing this regardless of how negative and sad it can be, because if I'm not like, it's just, it's a, it's a huge loss for them, for them. So I just got to keep plugging away. Yeah. And it's your passion, at least yeah. it seems like. So yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, that's great. And uh, I'm gonna do yeah, I'm gonna do the best <laughs> I can to make it out to one of these trips one day. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do like butterflies yeah. or something for you. We'll go into a field and do <laughs> butterflies or something. Yeah, that'll yeah. that'll that'll be nice. That'll be sweet. Yeah. Okay. Let's um let's talk about butterflies for a minute. Um, how has dating uh, life been for you? Uh, I would say, uh, I say the spring and coming after January, it's, I started to date a little bit more. Um, and it's been fun, but I feel like very cautious with it all. It's a, I feel like it's a weird space right now. And then, you know, people always ask me about paradise. Why don't you go out stuff? It's like, I don't even have, I don't have time. I don't have time to really dive into a serious relationship. I'm all over the world right now doing this stuff. And it's like, how can you take on both? So I've just taken a step back, especially from the bachelor world. Um, and I've been dating, but not very seriously. I've been, it's more fun and seeing how things go. If someone really grabs my attention, sure, I'll take it more serious. But right now it's just kind of like meeting people and still staying connected and making connections, but not very seriously. Got so, it. so wait, so what was that with paradise? People were talking about you saying you're going to wash up on the beaches of paradise. Oh yeah. Well, I, yeah. We did oh, yeah. have that. We had yeah. that as a, a clickbait article. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're just going to boat on over. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that, that's still booked. I'm actually going next week. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> you're going next week. No, yeah. Wait, I yeah. thought he's damn dad ass serious. No, no, no. I'm actually not. Um, oh, don't. I know, oh, but yeah. like, listen, the sarcasm is my thing, right? I thought that my sarcasm was spewing when I said that before, but apparently mm -hmm. not. People grabbed on that. I think people really wanted it to be true. Well, I think well, that you were like- when you, when you go back on The Bachelorette, people are like, oh, he going to paradise. <laughs> you know yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it was, it's, it's, you know, no, I couldn't even imagine diving into that again. Like, especially just after everything, all the public stuff with how all that, you know, mess went. I was just like, okay, let's let's breathe for a while here. I don't need to get it back into anything remotely in that drama filled mm -hmm. world. No, let's take a step. So, so, do you think? Um, 
So I know a lot of the guys, I have a lot of friends who are guys from the show and yep. they come off the show, they get a lot of attention, of course, from the ladies. Sure. Do you think sure. you would want to date someone who was still like in either Bachelor and or like reality or that has some sort of following or are you like, forget that, I want to date this girl who's never been on TV, who you know, and I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I think I see benefits in both. I see benefits in dating somebody from the world that really understands because I have dated outside of and people don't really get it when I'm posting stuff like they're kind of question things. They don't love it. And this happened once a couple months ago where they just like weren't into the whole thing that I was doing and like showing my face all the time on Instagram and stuff. And they didn't love that, which is a downfall. But I also see people like if you're with somebody in the world it's this comfort supporting thing where you're both in the same thing. You understand each other's work and how this all kind of happens. It's hard to find somebody in that world that fits that like, it's not that easy to do. And I think, mm -hmm. I think there's, we would like to have that, but it's not as simple. I think that after this little trip that I did, there are some other females on this trip that work in the conservation space that yes. after the trip, I was like, it would be so cool to find someone that's really aligned in this for me because I thought they were just attractive in the way that like they handle things. I'm like, and their passion for this stuff is like, I, I want to be around this more. Right. And so yeah, it's hard right. to find girls, like, women in the wildlife conservation space that have that same mindset. So if I could find someone in the world that's like that, they don't have to be on TV. I don't give a shit. If we have the same alignment and passions and, and goals and, um, I'll dive into that relationship. I don't care if you have a hundred followers or none and don't even have Instagram. Like, let's do this, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's so important to me, I think. And I realized that more after this trip. Mm, yeah, alignment. Um, Cause that's why I say like a lot of doctors date doctors cause they spend so much time in the hospital. And if this is something that you want to dedicate your life to traveling, doing these trips, yeah, it will be hard to just leave whoever at home or, and so yes. if they could go, that would be great. Cause I, that was, I was going to ask you that. Did you ask any girls to go with you on your last trip? You asked Joe, you asked Noah, <laughs> did you ask any girls to go with you? So, so I hadn't asked for this trip because I was, it was the first one I was diving into like a, a one that was maybe, I was careful who I selected, but I do like, there's a crossover happening with a different show for another trip coming up in July. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet, but it is a girl coming with me. And, mm -hmm. and that's the thing, right? Like I can't be all guys. Like it, 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 it defeats the purpose of partnering with, with people and personalities. If I can only go with guys just because, so it's a super professional trip, but it's a crossover from a different show and she's a female and she's coming with me. So, um, yep. I'll be diving in and bring girls along too. Um, but it's definitely like that weird space where it's like, hey, this has to be handled the right way because PR can take this and spin this however they want to. If I'm taking a girl or girls okay. with trips, like, is there something there? Is there not? It's your so it's girlfriend. Like, You're taking like, your girlfriend. Right. But like, yeah, it can yeah. be spun in so many ways. So I got to be dating. careful with that. But, but yeah, yeah. So I'll be taking girls for sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. oh. Natasha, would you ever do any wildlife trips? Yeah, yeah. no. And I was no. sitting here thinking, okay, so, who yeah. would go? <laughs> Natasha, Natasha's in the Hamptons every other week. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I remember a long time ago, Blake. We had a conversation, and I was telling yeah. you about. I, I asked you about killing cockroaches or something, or yeah. like, or, yeah. or like spiders or something. I'm afraid of spiders. Like, I'm not going on that damn trip. <laughs> Sorry, I will support. I will repost. I will listen. Well, I'm all about eco friendly. <laughs> Save the planet. Save the babies. But like, uh, -uh. <laughs> well, like I said, like there's there's instances where we're not out there remote. Like there's cool hotels and you know Four Seasons, like right up your alley, where you can go spend the morning with dolphins. Then we can go and put you on a a, a cabana and drinks, and you know we're all good. So it's uh, it's, it's it's creating uh, that it's creating that balance, Natasha. Yeah, I'll well, be look, at, well, if, me and Natasha, go, Natasha and I will be at that one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tia, you gotta come too. We'll do a clickbait right? from wild well, from the, the wildlife clickbait. Yeah, uh, like edition. the more you say that, the more I'm like, this is tempting. Yeah. I'll go say, yeah, this. yeah well, let's Tia, do it. Tia, Tia, if you could choose one animal or one species that you've always thought is super cool to go do work with, what one would it be? Sea turtles. Okay, so that's happening this year, but with somebody else. So, <laughs> come on, strike, strike out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love <laughs> turtles. Like anywhere, okay. any, any kind of turtle, not even sea turtles. I mean, I'll go golfing with my fiance and I'm like looking for turtles in the pond. <laughs> I love a turtle. Also love penguins. I know that's not really, probably not. No, those are, those are really cool. That could be happening in, in November in Argentina. Penguins. I love yeah. a penguin too. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, what about you? Um, One species that you think is super cool. 
Uh, I like penguins. <laughs> <laughs> I like turtles. <tunnels. laughs> uh, yeah, just, penguins just, are cool. I think you're that kid in cool. class just goes like same, yeah, like, same, like that answer. Yeah. I was a kid in class. Yeah, like my head was down. You know, I was just like yeah, I was a yeah, bad. Yeah. I was not the best um, student. I'll admit that, you know, but I know I like, I like what I say. Penguins. I like penguins. I think penguins are cool. Yeah. Or like uh, polar, bears. Sure. That'd be sick. Yeah. polar bears. Yeah. Really cool. Polar bears would be cool. Ah, bears. Ah, I don't know. I rather <laughs> stay away from, uh, <laughs> not looking to fuck with a bear, you know, <laughs> well, I'm, just... a, I'm obsessed with birds and tight and, yeah? and, and, and like cheetahs, bird, like cops. birds and cheetahs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You like these scary things. Yeah, cheetahs. Oh, not like, a lot of girls love birds. It's a, it's like a phobia birds for a lot of scared women. the shit. I love birds. I love birds. I really do. I don't like pigeons, of course, but right, right. <laughs> pigeons are the death of me here in New York. <laughs> they have, just, ah! Blake, like, have you ever been in a um, a situation where you were scared for your life out of one of these things? Uh, I think the closest one, the closest feeling I got to that would have been in Kenya. But when you're with the rangers out there and you see how calm they are, even though there's, you know, hyena and you're hearing lion and you're in your tent and they're right, right next to you. Or, you know, even though they're elephants, you see them as these big, gentle giants, which they are for the most part. If they turn in a second, like you're done. Like if they choose, you're done. Yeah. And so yeah. you know, you're that close in a tent and you can hear them in the middle of the night, like pulling the grass with the oh. trunk beside your tent. Like that feeling is a feeling you can't, you can't get that any other way. And so it's like a anxiety type feeling. But it's, I felt weirdly comfortable in that setting. I think just because, like, I, I don't know, I, I feel like I was meant to do this because it just doesn't get me the way it would probably most people. I feel like the yeah. ocean is a scary place altogether. Yeah. Because there's so much going on down there that we just don't know about. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ocean, I think we first dove in and we were in like 4,000 feet of water and you're looking down. Is it dark? It feels like you're it's in, you're, it, it's, it just goes blue forever but it look, feels like you're in space because there's no objects to give you any oh. reference of like on that to like a shark will come by or whatever that gives you some reference but yeah it, it, it makes it, you uh, feel nauseous in a, a way a shark like will come by and give you some reference thanks shark <laughs> for letting me know where i am yeah. absolutely hey, not <laughs> yeah. so okay if you had to pick land or water like you had to like hey blake we're you can only do one or the other which would you pick land i've always been more into mammals and yeah land i just i don't feel as comfortable in water but i would say i have i want to do this again so i'm actually going back joe i don't know if you want to come with me but i'm coming back to do some silky shark work research work um this weekend so silky uh, shark plan for the whole i, I actually i have uh, <laughs> i have dinner reservations saturday so. <laughs> okay, <right. laughs> I, was, I don't know if i'll be able to get out of it all right, Blake. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna play a game with you, Silky but before shark. we do, um, just let us know, like you know, what uh, what else you got going on? What's yep. what's Run down what's the coming up in us. the future? And then we're gonna play this game. Yeah. So trip wise, um, I have wolves at the end of the month. I'm going down to work oh. with wolf pups. Yeah, wolf pups. Oh. Uh, oh. Mexican gray wolf pups have been born. We're doing a vet check on them, and we're gonna do shoot some content with them. We have sea turtles. We have doing stuff with pollinators and bees. We have uh, sea turtles. We have, um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, so there's a South Africa trip probably coming up where we're helping uh, animals that have been snared and turning the snares into jewelry. And so um, there's Aww. some cool things with that and, and dehorning rhinos to help protect rhinos. So there's lots of cool things coming up uh, trip wise. That's really taking over my summer. Um, I'm going to Portugal too. Uh, I'm going to Portugal in August, just a family trip there. So lots oh, going nice. on. Hence, hence why I haven't dove into the relationship stuff. I'm just kind of taking a step back. And then um, that's really the most of it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's yeah. not, um, that's not a little. So a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a lot. That's a lot. But, I mean, what was it, your, yeah. What was really your I gotta go, I gotta go chase down some wolves, but that's right all now? I'm doing. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wolves are cool. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, my favorite animal, rhino. I think that's rhino, what got right. started for me. Yeah, rhinos for sure. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. All right, we're going to do game a game. Time. Sure. It's Hit rapid me. fire. First thing that comes to mind when I ask these questions to you. Okay. What's one word, one, one word? No, it, it could be a phrase, whatever, but okay. it's just first thing that comes to mind. Sure. Uh, rapid fire. All right. Are you an early riser or a night owl? 
early riser. Best dating advice you've ever received? <clears throat> go on every day. Like, don't be a wish wash. If you're saying you're going on, go on it. Show up to even ones you're not that excited about because there you can be surprised. Who said that? No, uh, I, 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 got, my own I go on not. dates. Like, I, I don't, I don't mess around. Like, if I'm like, eh, I'm wish wash, but I'll just go and just, you never know. Like, you can only judge someone so much through like computer or whatever. Like, people have yeah, been, true. I've been surprised big time in real life by people just because I didn't. Maybe I need know. to take that advice because I'll be like, mm, I'm not feeling it. No, thanks. Yeah, no. Um, it's going to be just, an unpleasant just, surprise. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, favorite go to pizza order? Mm -hmm. it's all veg now for me and it's all a big vegan cheese and stuff so like i don't love pizza as much as i used to it's not the same <laughs> so, man it's not it's not that vegan it's cheese not, but does it, not melt i know that that's why okay i struggle with this order <laughs> I, every time but it is what it is it's veg you and it's pizza. vegan cheese yeah okay call or text call what animal would you love to have as a pet if you could have any animal as a pet Oof. Oof. Ah, uh, she's um probably, probably a wolf. Mm, yes. Favorite curse word. Mm. Oh, fuck for sure. I use it all the time. <laughs> We're like three for three on that, I think. Yeah. Every, yep. Everyone says that. Yep. Yeah. I just want someone to be come in here and be like, bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I would be jealous. I should have yeah. thought more about yeah, that. Yeah, fuck. Uh, okay, last person from Bachelor Nation you spoke to. Ed Waysbro. Ed. Ed. Um, I've never so heard his last look. name. Yeah, yeah. I did Waysbro. not know that's how you said it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. either. How yeah, you have some of my shirt. Waysbro. Waysbro. Yeah. Um, it, He's going on a trip. You're telling us now? No, he's not. Oh. He just has He has some of my shirt stuff I got to get from him, so I messaged him about getting that back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Last meal on earth. What are you eating? Mm. <laughs> Probably like I love, I love Brussels sprouts. Isn't that the weirdest answer? <laughs> but like Brussels sprouts, like in like oil and, and onion is so good. Brussels That's sprouts. it? Just Brussels no, sprouts. nothing else? Joe, well, Joe, how, well, you, listen, Joe, how you listen, feel about that? About, about, listen, hold on a second. About <laughs> three years ago, that would have been a completely different answer, but I don't eat I don't eat meat and things anymore, right? So, like, I've had to change. I mean, like, Look maybe some you. vegan ice cream and stuff. Like, I, I don't know. Like, no, it's, I've had, listen, Brussels sprouts could be good. But if it's your last <laughs> meal on earth ever... Okay, I would put Joe's Sunday sauce on it. There yeah, you, you, would, you wouldn't there eat the spaghetti and meatballs, that's, the steak. That's too no. kind of you, Blake. Thank you for that. No worries. Uh, you can, you can you, put that shit on anything, Joe. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, okay. What animal w were you in another life? Uh, a rhino. Nice. A rhino. Yeah, What's big, the photo? docile, could be mean if they want to, but for the most part, they just do their own thing, a waddle around. It's pretty much you. <laughs> pretty much you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's on your phone screensaver? What's the picture? Be black. better than Ivan. It's just, black. it's just, it's just black. Damn it. It's just black. <laughs> I'm like clean. I'm a weirdo. I'm like clean. I don't like things in the background. I want some my apps <laughs> all organized and like I'm a weirdo. I thought like it was going to be like, you know, a rhino. A rhino. An animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, would th you would think, but like my Instagram page is full of that. So I see, you know what I mean? I don't need that in my life 24-7. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Last one. If you could visit anywhere in the world, where would you go? <coughs> Madagascar. Mm. Oh, oh that'd be really cool. Such like species richness there. Are so many things you could see there. Um, you should plan list. it. I'd be a weirdo with the with the binoculars, with the list of all the things, and I'd be checking them off on there. You know, that would be my jam. That'd be cool. Nice. I see yeah. that for you. You're gonna go there very soon. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. This was great. Yeah, was I feel fun. like I. I mean, I, I'm all I'm pescatarian. I still don't eat fish, um, but I haven't ate meat in five years now, and I don't know if I want to go back. <laughs> don't know. Yeah. You don't listen. Brave, I, like, I, red meat yeah, ever i do i do. yeah yeah I, I i love it listen i love the taste of it i just it is contradictory of me and a dick of me to know the impacts it has on conservation and then me go talk like i, I this is true I have, I have to 
walk yeah. the walk. You know what I mean? Right. So that makes sense. That makes how sense. Long, how long has it been since you stopped eating meat? So I stopped beef and pork probably three and a half years ago now. But for instance, like on this trip, we're out there, I was served a pork chop. And it's like, okay, I never eat it. If I don't eat this, I'm just having bread and rice. So like I eat the thing, right? So yeah. I don't complete, I'm not like complete eliminate everything. It, it's, I'm just very conscious. And I've really reduced, I would say 90% of my animal product intake. I don't say everyone has to go vegan, go extremist, but we just all have to be better. So like, that's all, totally. I, that's how I talk about it. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. to bring nice. up Kendall, but Kendall would do that too. Like if she was traveling in a yeah. different country and it was a delicacy there, she would eat meat there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I respect like cultures and those things. Like we were in Kenya and they just, they're eating goat. And I, first off, I don't like goat at all, but like they serve it to you and they're excited to serve it to you. And yeah. it's goat and it's cartilage stuff. And I, and I don't like, but you eat, you just, you eat it. And you it's not a gas it station chicken tender. You know, it's. <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. I, would be, yeah. I, I don't yeah. actually, I actually don't like goat either. I actually think. I would be yeah. eating yeah. air. I would be like, I'm not eating that. Eating air. Yeah. I'd be eating air. I'd be like, mm, guys, just the air looks <laughs> different here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Blake, uh, Thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. No, uh, yeah, let our listeners you. know where they could find you on social media before you go. Yeah. Uh, just my Instagram really is the only thing that's really rolling right now. Eventually I will have all my YouTube stuff uh, on YouTube, all these cool adventures that are nice. going to docu-series on YouTube. Just so you can check that out and all the work that's happening with that. And you can check out other personalities that are coming along with me. But yeah, just my Instagram is where you see most of my stuff at my name. So Great. Cool. Thanks, Blake. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for Thanks, coming guys. on. Thank Bye. you. I'm a little surprised. I really did think Blake was, we were going to see him in paradise. I would have, I would have uh, lost that wager. I thought Blake was going to be in paradise. Um, Pay up, Joe. Pay I couldn't up. tell. I couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, I did. I thought he was going for sure, but he's out there uh, living his passion and he's doing better for the world. So, um, that doesn't mean we yeah. don't see him in paradise next year or the year hey, after that. You never yeah, know. Sure. You never know. Right. Um, right? and, if there are women listening, which I'm assuming there are, um, and you are single and really into wildlife, that seems to be uh, that would yeah, be so to be ideal Blake's to have that. Too. Oh my gosh, Similar DM interest. Blake, DM yeah. him a picture of a rhino and say, "Hey." <laughs> there you go. His DMs are going to be blowing up now. Mm, love it. It's worth a shot. You never know. Yes. yes. All yes. right. Thank you so much to our listeners and thank you to Blake for being here today. Yes. And as always, make sure to subscribe and listen. We want to hear all your burning questions. Send them to us. Check us out on social. Like, comment, DM us. You know where to find us. Clickbait BN on Instagram. All the links to our socials are right there on that page. And share your stories with us. We want to know what clickbait you guys are looking at this week. Clickbait is available on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. You can listen ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.